Anyway, I'll, I will put uh, the uh, website link on my cyber campus. If you come to the cyber campus, you can find the link and then you can uh, view. Take a look at the um, lecture of last Monday. Also, I will put a lecture on Wednesday as well uh, after this class. And since we are recording this lecture as well, and I think this one, one will be on the air as well. Okay, last time we talked about um, the major component about water quality model. And the most important um, uh, factors uh, of calculating the your concentration, movement of your material, is the velocity and dispersion due to concentration difference and reaction. This one includes uh, decomposition, decay, settling, absorption, things like that, also volatilization, and also loadings. They can uh, come uh, either in the form of point source or non point source. Okay? And this one must be working. Okay, we talked about this. I will just skip it over. And then also, we are going to talk about the mass due to movement, mass due to uh, mass movement due to uh, velocity, mass movement due to dispersion, mass movement due to because of reaction, and the other um, processes. Actually, uh, those are justly, uh, just exactly the same as. Uh, your accounting process, just like your um, money in your bank, something coming in, something going out. If you add everything coming in minus everything going out, that means you have something in your system left over. And then if you divide that mass by your volume, that is your concentration. We talked about that. So those are equations uh, for um, advection, dispersion, reaction, and Loadings and uh, withdrawals, and we can talk about this. Um, we can talk about those uh, pretty soon. All right. So we talked about reactions and this and that, and we want uh, to express this kind of process in the form of equation. Okay, and well, what we did last time was let's say my mass mass in delta mass is sigma of mass in and, and sigma of mass out and in, uh, in mass and this one can be um, uh, also, this one can be uh, expressed as advection, dispersion, reaction, and uh, sources, and things. And we can call this as loading. Okay, and in here, I said my mass is the uh, multiplication of concentration of concentration and volume. And since uh, my concentration is simply uh, defined as like this, and I, uh, I can simply, I can easily calculate my mass like that. So, and everything in here is kind of like a... Uh, 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 something c times d, something c times d. Anyway, anyway, and 
in here also um, but we usually like to uh, change or convert uh, this equation in the form of uh, the function of time function of time that means I divided everything by time we call this edge rate since we are talking about mass we call this as mass rate in other words uh, change of mass uh, in a given time okay and so this one will be um, as we said like this this one will be c times three times somehow temperature no 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 time okay and many times we call this as r times v that we simply can uh, um, where is this imagine my r uh, can be expressed by using and c divided by t okay and if we are talking about some uh, small changes of concentration and over small changes of time then you can express this like that and then later we will talk about that and if we send this one to zero uh, by the definition of differentiation we can express this thing like this and this is my re actually R is the abbreviation of reaction, R. Okay, then what, uh, what am I going to do? I said I want to express this, pro this process uh, by using some kind of equation. Okay, equation is uh, something left hand side, it equals something right hand side. Okay, and now I, what I am interested in is, let's say, this is the concentration that I want to um, follow, okay? So my C is the school plus, let's say. In other words, or any material. You can say uh, B O E. Or if you are just looking at uh, carbon only, then you, you're going to be talking about total organic carbon. But anyway, let's say this whole thing is C now. And then we are interested in um, uh, the how are we going to uh, express this uh, change of concentration over time in the form of equation. So DCDT. What is DCDT? What is DCDT? And then we said, okay, from many uh, empirical findings or observations or um, studies and we even though there are many different uh, um, uh, ways to express this we found out okay this one k minus k times c to the power of n is the the most um, is a good good form good equation uh, uh, so that you can use uh, uh, in this kind of case okay so this one is a little bit different. We what? Why? What do we call this kind of thing? Is this is empirical? In other words, based on experience or observation, right? You found something and you think about it and then you, s you can come to kind of conclusion that okay if I express this kind of person with this equation I think somehow I can express this kind of thing right <coughs> so this is totally different from different from theoretical right it's not the theoretical the most 
representative theoretical equation is Newton's second law. This is what does it say? And if you have something, uh, you are under the equatorial. Right? If you find something, you find something is dropping from apple tree, you think about m times g, if you were in Newton. Okay? And we know this is weight. Okay? This m is mass times g is weight. Okay? And this is kind of force. When uh, something is uh, dropping from this and there, and this is kind of force. And this is very much important. If this is mass, this is acceleration. What is acceleration? This is the differentiation of your velocity, right? Acceleration. So this is the force. Okay. This is your rectal part. And if you somehow know your M, your A, and then if you multiply it together, that's exactly is your force. But in here, if you know K, if you know C, if you know N, if you multiply or calculate it together, is that exactly this CDT? No. Approximately. You can have some error. Because this is based on your findings. We just try to pick something that is good for this situation, right? And so it's very um, probable that you are not going to have ideal uh, equation in your case. But many scientists and many engineers, many seniors of our, our uh, study, they uh, found out, okay, this is good for our purpose to um, apply this kind of uh, equation to what about the modeling process. Okay, so in here, according to, based on the number in here, we say, we can say if it's zero, it's zero order, and if this is one, it's first order, and this is, uh, if we have uh, uh, two, it's second order, if you have n, it's just n order, okay? So this is general case. And now we know how to um, what is it, play with uh, uh, first and second, third, and whatever. But problem is, it's very difficult. It's very cumbersome for us to um, try every different end every time. So we want to find out better method to calculate those uh, n and k, right? So first thing that we did was integral method. This is a kind of um, trial and error, just like we did uh, before, zero, first, second, something like that. So we tried, let's say, the first order, second order, and third order, things like that. And then we closely take a look at the coefficient of determination, which is a square of r, correlation coefficient. And then we found out this one is the best. But this is not bad. This is not bad either. But uh, this one is a lot better. So, okay, then say, oh, well, I like this one. And uh, what did I use? Okay, this is the log versus uh, time. And that is... Uh, uh, then, uh, in this case, where, where is it? and I have log versus time right here, and this one uh, is the uh, first order, then that means I assumed my uh, the reaction rate is, uh, can be expressed in the, for, uh, in the, in the for, using the first order equation. So, I found out, uh, okay, my Number n1 as a number of n is good. So I, I can say, okay, then uh, this one is good, and then uh, this is my uh, equation. Well, what did 
What are you doing here? Log of C is log of C0 minus KT. And in this case, I have a log, I have T, then I must have minus because I have a, this one, this is going to be minus K, and this one is log of C0. And in general, I know my initial concentration, so no problem here. But I want to know K, but uh, the way they, we can find K is we draw a line and try to find the slope. And then this is my K. In this case, what is slope? Right here, K okay? minus 0 0.0972. That's your K, okay? And in here, I also said I, I was talk about talked about unit of K. And Churchill, did you read the textbook? Yes, okay. Then you should be able to tell me what is the unit of this K. What is this? Yeah, well, we, we can say this is slow. Unit means what is this is the meter, second, and gram, whatever. What is unit? Mention this? Well, most simplification of these two will be dimensionless. Okay? And then to make this one dimensionless, what should we know? What is the unit of T? Time, right? In this case, let's say, since we used what, what? Day? And to make this dimensionless, what should we do? We need to multiply this by 1 over day, right? So that we can cancel those together. Okay? Yeah. So you uh, gave me the right answer, uh, but uh, sorry, I didn't understand fully. That was my mistake, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so dimensionless, whole term is dimensionless, and to make the whole term dimensionless, I need to have something that they can fight with this division. That is the inverse of A. Okay? So now I know I have K. K is, let's say, then uh, 0.0972. Uh, per day is my K. Okay? Do I have to have minus here? Church and answer me. Do I, do I have to have minus sign? Yes or no? No, right? Because this is constant. Okay? Minus sign simply means I have a minus slope. That's it. Okay? I already have minus there. I already have minus there. And my K is this. Okay? Which is a real number or a natural number. Natural number? No, no. It's a real number. Okay, then secondly, uh, we talked about, well, this method, integration method, it's a little bit cumbersome because I have to try for third order, first order, second order, and then compare R square and then do blah, blah, blah. And why don't we just try to get it in one shot, okay? So that's the differentiation method. So I want to um, divide my equation a little bit further. Let's say um, I will start from here. Okay. Then I will, for convenience, I will move my minus sign here, and then KC to the power of n. And then you can take logarithm for both that side, and you can still have this one right there. And then we know we can 
divide this one into two parts like this. Okay? I, um, according to my textbook, if you go back to your textbook, and you have uh, a data in your page 30. Okay? Example 2.1, you have data. And you are supposed to solve this every example when I am done with the class, okay? So I'm sure you also reviewed your class and studied enough, right? Okay, I have now C and T, right? Okay? So I have a whole bunch of uh, number, zero from 12 from something. Okay? And then I want uh, in here, by looking at this, and what I am trying to do in here is um, if I have log of C, if I have log of uh, minus dc dt, then I will have something like this, right? And this is going to be your intercept. And this one is going to be your slope. What is your intercept? And this is log of k, your intercept, and slope is n. Then if you are going, if you are able to, draw this line and find out this value and this value, then this is a piece of cake for you to find out k and n. Okay? Well, this is the, um, uh, or is this the logic uh, behind this approach. But how do we calculate this and that? Okay? And then, in this case, my DCDT is uh, actually, this one came from delta C and delta T and this one also can be C, uh, I plus 1 mi minus uh, C, I, and T, uh, I plus 1 minus T, I, something like that. Then, let's say you have I here, and this is 1, 2, whatever, okay? Then this is your T, I, and C, I. So T0, C0, T1, uh, C1, things like that. And then this, this is going to be easy for you to calculate, uh, let's see, C uh, I plus 1 minus C I and T I plus 1 minus T I and then multiply whole thing by minus 1 and then you can come up with something well of course you need to calculate uh, uh, by using uh, this two let's say and you need to find out some value in here and then let's see you have 3 here and 9, then you need to find out some value. Okay? By using um, just, uh, two values, you can come up with this. And then also, what is uh, your C? And that can be kind of uh, average of this one, then you can calculate this one 12 times plus 10 to 7 and divide by 2. It's, this is your uh, average concentration in this situation. Okay? So, you have now something like, um, you, of course we can take um, logarithm of this one and logarithm of this one as well, right? And then we can, or if you use Excel or things like that, and then you can have, a, let's say, log of, a, let's say this one is, this whole thing is uh, Y, and this uh, log of C is the same, X. Then you have uh, something X and Y, right? And if you have something, then what is this? We talked about this, right? This one is intercept, which is this one, right? And this one is slope. So that's the uh, differentiation method. It's a lot easier for us, right? Uh, to, um, to, uh, Think about n and k, and a lot more straightforward to find out that. So I have a t, c, delta c over delta t, and log, and of uh, average, and log of. That's actually so. This, this 
with the delta. So I draw a line and then I uh, got uh, equation like this, right? And then um, if I compare this and that, what is my n? n is 1.19, okay? And my log of k is minus 1.1721, okay? Log of k is, log of k is 1.9. Log of k is minus uh, 1, right? Then if this is uh, based on, uh, on in, uh, 10, and this must be like this uh, from the definition of logarithm, and this one in here I use, uh, they use uh, the common logarithm. If I use natural logarithm like this, then I have things like this, and then also I have a little slightly different end, but it's close to enough to uh, close enough so that you can say n is about one, and then uh, this is not minus point nine minus zero point nine seven five seven. That's my k. In this case, my l and k based on e is. Uh, minus uh, point, uh, nine, seven, five, seven, whatever, and k is e to the power of, right? And those two must be uh, the same, and, but due to um, somehow uh, some uh, mathematical error, small error, I think they are um, a little different. But if you um, uh, carry enough number of digits, if you use um, something like um, uh, Excel or program, I think those numbers must be pretty close to each other. Okay, oh, well, I have uh, 20 minutes left, and this is very much important, uh, so I want to um, uh, go over today. The list squares method. We spent uh, about 30 minutes of reviewing the previous class that's not really good. But I just need it for you. Right? Right. And then so far we when you use the differentiation method and we found out well this, there can be some oh try to calculate n or k by our hand, by our eyes, and we want to find out good mathematical way, good mathematical way to find the line that can have uh, the minimum error. between data and curve or line. In this case, I use the line, but we can use curve as well, okay? Let's say, since we are talking about at this time line, then this is like, uh, what is this? Y equals A plus B times X. This is my, uh, I call this as Regression. Uh, statistically, regression is going back. But like a, just a, you find out your home, it's going back. But in this case, it's not going to give you some emotional or the uh, institutional something. And we just we just accept at this time as it is. And regression is kind of uh, uh, try to find out uh, the original uh, uh, 
Yes, they try to, it's, it's, it's the kind of expression that we try to find out, try to find out origin, whatever. I must uh, stop of explaining this like this. Anyway, and what do we do? What do we do? So in this case, uh, we need to find out what is error. And let's say we have a point, right? This is I, x i y i. And each point, let's say x i y i is a, let's say i of one two. Square 
and then well, so and then add everything up. Oh, sorry. Anyway. This is, what, this is what I'm going to do. This is very, very important. Very, very important. So, you open your both eyes wide open. Open your eyes widely and take a close look at that. Alright. So, in here I called this one, whole thing is my S. Why did I call S? I don't know. Because my name starts from S. Maybe you can use K. You can use L, whatever. Okay? So, in here, if you take a look at this, I want to find out A and B. Okay? A and B. Y. They can give me, they can make S the least squares of error to make this one the least. So then what is my uh, hero? What, what is the uh, 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 things of interest to me? I want, I'm interested in to find out A and B. Those two are my main uh, guests here. Okay? Main focus, main foci. Alright? So, if you look at this one, and if you somehow expand this equation, then what do we need to do? We will have a square something. I don't know, but uh, it's, it's obvious that we can have a square something, and we have a combination a, b, x, y, and it's easy for us. And then, actually, uh, if we uh, uh, rearrange this equation, this one also will have something and. Well, this one is, let's say, star and triangle. In here, we have a circle and maybe uh, whatever. Okay? Now, forget about X and Y. Let's think about S and A only. Okay? So, my S becomes something A then if you draw a graph between A and S what will be the shape of the curve? This is your middle school math Right? Alright? Okay, if you think about, just forget about this then, if you think about B and S, you have this one. What will be the shape of the curve? Again, second order polynomial. So, each other. So, you find out, you want to find out A and B. That makes your S the list. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, if you can somehow find A here, if you can somehow find B, this is A, this is B, that you are looking for. Okay? So, in here, just let's go back to this equation. If, what is this point? 
This is a vertices oxygen, right? And in here, if I differentiate, what is the value? Slope changes from minus to plus. That has to go through zero, right? So if you find A, that can make your S, DSD, DA zero, then your A. That's your A. Again, in here, if you find uh, something DSDB equals zero, then that's your B. Okay. If you understood this methodology, the rest of the thing is just mechanical. Okay? Automatic. Right. Come here. I want differentiate this equation. So I don't care about this sigma. If we want to differentiate this, I have two. I have two, right? And then you have to differentiate this side for A. Okay? So we will regard this one as constant. If you differentiate constant, that's zero. I don't care. If you differentiate your constant B, Xi, I don't care. Zero. If you differentiate this one minus a, what you will get? Minus one. Right? Yes. 
2 i and all sigma x i y i yes because I can multiply together and then add that all up. Do I know x i square? Yes. So eventually, so though everything in here is just those are numbers. Now so I can just simply substitute and calculate a and b. So it's, it's a matter of solving in the, uh, the, the second order polynomial or a second order matrix like this, and this one is going to be like that. This one. Okay. Well, because of time limitation, I have to stop here, but I want to um, go back. And I want to calculate this one like this. Okay? And I'll give you a little homework. Try, try, this equation, instead of, in this case, how many unknowns do you have? How many unknowns? Three. How many equations do you need? Three. Okay, the equation d s d a equals zero, d s d b equals zero, d s d c equals zero. Then you have three equations, and then you can rearrange your equation like this, and so for a and b and c by Wednesday. So you got your deal. Okay. Have a nice day. Thank you.